Well, that's one of the things like uh, we were talking about using, uh, talking to somebody about uh, that is using chat GPT to create syntax for um, flows and, 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 and other stuff like to, so some of the complexity um, of power automate and uh, which is, was great. But, you know, one of the limitations of chat GPT is that it's, you know, based on the, um, you know, the, the, the date that it was trained on that, yeah. whether it has access to that data. So if you have with a lot of the PowerShell stuff, like, I don't know how long those are be out there, whether it would be able to find it within its libraries. Yeah. It, it, they even talked about that you know, when we were in, in Redmond, right? Where the, they said that there are things that are being developed so fast that the, the models can't keep up. So, yeah. you know, they, they, they're like, you can't expect, you know, anything near real time with, with AI, unless you have a model that is completely open um, in terms of constantly consuming information. And to me, um, and from what I, you know, and it's been all over the news, right? Everybody's talking about it. They went in front of Congress and stuff like that about it too. But, you know, that is the scary part. Having an AI model that is actually listening in real time and and going out and, and searching in real time, that's scary because that's when things can get messy, you know, with the responses and with, you know, the actions that people take off of those responses. Um, I just I see a lot of problems with that. Just need to so be watching the, the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I did try to use Chat GPT to write that script for me to write a report. All I needed from the report was the SharePoint site, the title, and if it's lock state. And I had the properties, and I wanted to spit it out to an Excel. So I asked Chat GPT for that. Uh uh I'm like, yay! I did this whole script. I plug it in. It did work. Well, like, so there's you have PMPs to, versus SPOs and web versus site and all this stuff that I was. Well, not only that, but you have to you you have to know how to pr to create a prompt in ChatGPT, because if you don't yeah. prompt it correctly, it doesn't come back with the correct information. You know, when you started out, did you say I, I need you to act like a developer? Okay, uh, and okay. I need you to yeah, I need you to think like this. I need you, you know, and. and if you go out, uh, I think on GitHub, there's a thing called awesome chat GPT prompts or something like that. Okay. And literally list hundreds of these prompts and they're full paragraphs. Just to ask one question is like a full paragraph because you're setting up the actual AI model with all this information like, okay, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is the information they want me to get. You know all this other stuff and then it comes back with more of a complete answer and a more accurate answer okay. but yeah but there's work involved on the front end you know on your your part to do that but i think you can get a better a more accurate result um by by you know prompting better yeah case in point girl don't code yeah <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say something christian yeah, sorry. Well, I've forgotten now because I was yeah. uh, thoroughly entertained by that answer. So you were thoroughly, you were thoroughly yeah. bored by that answer. <laughs> Checked out. No, actually, what was what was the uh, you said that for the uh, I've seen a couple sites and I, I'm we're past the the question now anyway. So this is the filler yeah. in between. But um, uh, I found a couple sites and I've watched some videos of advice on how to structure your queries in chat GPT and things or other. What was the site prompts. that you mentioned? Called yeah, prompts. 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 Yeah. What what was the site you mentioned? So if you go out to GitHub and you search for awesome chat GPT prompt, and there's there's an entire repo. I found it. Perfect. I'll leave that in my notes there. Yeah, there's a and he that is literally updated on a constant basis where people are contributing. That's great prompts that they've actually used. Um, one of the things I saw in there was, um, I need you know I, I need you to act like a uh, on stage presenter. I need you to create an abstract for this type of talk. And I yeah. was like. I probably know people that are using that. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some of that stuff. Uh, I would love to be able to leverage more, more of. I mean, I really am using it now for um, 
for rewording stuff, for um, for like outline summarizing. creation, summarizing, yeah. like those those other things, not for like flat out creation of content. You got to be um, careful. You got to be careful because I mean, an example is one of the, and this is, I don't know if this is even public yet, but um, one of the, uh, I wouldn't say sites um, that creates really quick technical content mm -hmm. um, in little tiny one, three, five minute lengths is being sued uh, because they were using complete plagiarized information out of ChatGPT yeah. for you know their videos and for their their scripts and you know that's that's a big deal well, that's one of I the like reasons why i like tweets I like, I, creates tweets for me which yeah. is great and for seo stuff no the the um that's why i actually really like jarvis as the tool um because it has with the paid subscription the plagiarism checker built into yeah. it yeah. So it'll generate and, but it'll, uh, you know, identify the sources. And so you can actually cut and paste content in and it will identify if there's plagiarism there. Um, which is, I think any teacher now in this world that we're in would yep. be smart to be able to digitally plug any student's paper in and right away identify plagiarism. Grammar Grammarly now offers that as well. So Grammarly's jumping on that and they're offering That's it to smart. college colleges that's great yeah well somebody even mentioned that they're they're talking about some kind of metadata around it to be able to identify when ai generated content i'm like uh, mm -hmm. i don't know how that would be possible to do that there's no mm -hmm. underlying code when you copy and paste text from one screen to another there's no, no traceability in between no uh, that no would be a bigger issue if there was if you very, saved it you know. if you took if you took the result and saved it as a pdf or you saved it right. as a file, of, of course. course you can have metadata around it but if you're copy and paste then no if you copy and paste it into one note it puts the source yeah right yeah, yeah. you can then delete yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, that's but if you copy and that... paste it into into into, uh, <clears throat> into notepad and then copy yeah. it and paste it out of there you've got nothing but text. right well, so I think it was a politician who made that statement. I'm like, you don't understand the technology and how that, that's a pretty basic thing. But anyway. Mm -hmm.